Hello, my name is Mara Linsky Deegan, and I am the Associate Curator and Registrar here at the Charles H. McNider Art Museum in Mason City, Iowa. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the photographer Steve McCurry and a little bit about our piece uh, that we have in our collection by him uh, called Firefighter Scales Ladder. Steve McCurry, when he was a young man, decided that he wanted to be in film movies and wanted to work in movies. So he went to Penn State University to become a cinematographer. He thought that would be a great thing. He could work in film, work with cameras and do all that, and that was great. Um, but while he was at university, he actually um, started work for the college newspaper there and um, just really loved photography and especially photojournalism. Now, some people might be saying, well, what's photojournalism? How is that different from just taking a picture? And photojournalism is actually um, telling a story with a picture, just like a journalist would write a whole article about something that they wanted to let people know about, a photojournalist would take a picture of it. So he decided that's what he really wanted to do instead of being in films. So he switched all of his studies and um, decided to focus on that instead. He started his career as a photojournalist um, I'm not sure if he knew how dangerous sometimes uh, being a photojournalist can be, um, but he did find out pretty quickly. Um, he was uh, working in Pakistan, um, taking photographs of all kinds of things there, and somebody, um, one of his contacts in, in Pakistan said, um, you might want to go to Afghanistan because there might be some big things happening. And this was in the late 1970s. And uh, right at the end of the 1970s, the Soviet Union, which was a huge group of countries um, that uh, is no longer around but was around then, and it was a group of countries that kind of liked to take over other countries sometimes. And they were planning to take over, at least invade, Afghanistan. So when he was in Pakistan, he decided to dress up like an Afghan person and actually snuck himself over the border into Afghanistan right before the invasion. Um, and this could have been very dangerous. Um, it, it was very dangerous and it, it really could have um, put him in some life-threatening situations. But before we talk about exactly what we did, or what he did, excuse me, uh, I thought it would be good to talk a little bit about the way that photographers, especially photojournalists, worked back in the 1970s, 1980s, and pretty much any time before about the mid-2000s. And what I mean by that is a photojournalist now, um, just like pretty much anybody can do, can take a picture with their phone. Now, some of them do have very nice cameras, but you are able to take a picture with your phone and um, go ahead and send that picture right on the internet to whoever you want to right then. So I could go out and take a picture of our front yard of our museum. I could um, send that picture to CNN if I wanted to, and CNN would have that picture ready to go to put on the air in a, probably a matter of minutes, which is pretty awesome. But back in the 1970s, when he was uh, first starting out, that wasn't the case. You couldn't um, just take a picture with your phone really quickly and send it to somebody right away. You had to use a specific camera. You couldn't use your phone. And you also had to use film. Uh, and the film cameras, for some of you who might not have been able to use those when you were younger or um, uh, in times past, you actually had to put a special kind of film that was like on a roll. Uh, it was like on a roll of plastic. Uh, that had a canister on it and you would put that into the camera and then each time you take a picture it would expose that film to the light and stuff outside and then it would move on to the next little segment so there'd all be all kinds of different segments on the film and when you were ready to develop the film you would um, a lot of times photographers would develop it themselves but somebody like me would take it to a place and they would develop the film for me and then I would have the pictures but this process could take uh, usually a couple days, but sometimes it would be quick, but you'd have to get the film to the people who could process the film and take the pictures out of it. It wasn't instantaneous like it is now. So uh, Steve McCurry was a photojournalist. He went into uh, Afghanistan with his camera and his film and was able to take some pictures of um, the, what the Soviet Union was doing there and the way they were invading and things. And, and I don't think the Soviet Union wanted people to see that. Um, but he decided he wanted to show the world what was happening. Um, but to do that, he had to get the film back out of Afghanistan, back into Pakistan. So he, what he did is he took the film after he had taken it out of his camera and had it in there. 
Uh, another thing you should know about film is that it cannot be exposed to light until it's been developed. So you have to keep it in these little canisters that are plastic and, and really dark. Um, so he took those and sewed the film into his clothing. He also hid the film in his socks and underwear um, so that when he went back over the border, people didn't realize he had that film. Um, so that's kind of a dangerous thing, but he said, that, you know what, he liked this, and this is something he wanted to um, have his career be. Uh, wars and conflicts in his time as a photojournalist, including the um, Iran-Iraq War, uh, the Cambodian Civil War, the first Gulf War, which took place in the early 1990s, and also the Afghan Civil War. Um, and these are all different things that he wanted to document and show the world what was happening in these different places. Um, but one of the things that he's most known for, Steve McCurry, is taking pictures of people um, and how civil conflicts and war affects people. Um, and his most famous photograph, I think a lot of people have seen this photograph, even if they didn't know that he took it, is a photograph called Afghan Girl. And we'll let you see a picture of it in just a minute here, because as soon as you see it, you're going to be like, oh, I think I've seen that before. It was a photograph that was on the cover of National Geographic magazine in 1985 of a young girl in her early teens um, uh, in a refugee camp in Afghanistan. So in more recent years, um, Steve McCurry has kind of gotten away from uh, photojournalism. He retired uh, from being a, a full-time photojournalist and actually has been um, more of an artistic photographer. Now you might think, well, what's the difference between that? They're both photographers. Well, a uh, photojournalist photographer is, like I said, going to take pictures of something as it happened, as it exactly was. That's, they're documenting something in life. And uh, somebody who's doing more artistic photography can take uh, pictures any way they like to. They can make it look how they want to. They can even use programs like Photoshop or Paint or anything to um, create what they want from that photograph. So they could take the sky and make it purple if they wanted to. They could um, take everybody's faces out and give them all um, big yellow happy faces if they wanted to. That's up to the photographer because the photographer, when they're acting as an artistic uh, photographer, is really being an artist. They are taking the picture how they want and manipulating it the way they want. Where a photo journalist is just being a documentarian, and what I mean by that is they're just taking a picture of something how it is. So it's a lot different. Um, and so that's kind of what he's gotten into more. You can actually even go to his website, which will have a link to or information about how to get to that website um, at the end of our video. And you can see some of the cool things that he's been doing now and some of the bright, amazing colors and pictures of people he's been taking currently that are actually pretty cool. So the last thing we're going to talk about when we talk about Steve McCurry is this piece right here. Um, and like I said, this is called Firefighter Scales Ladder. Now, if you're my age, or really anybody who was alive and, and really knowing what's going on in 2001, so probably in 2001 if you were over the age of about five, you know exactly what this picture is of. Now, if you were not at least five in 2001, if you were maybe a little bit younger than that or maybe not even born, you might look at this and say, I don't really know what's going on in this picture. So I'm gonna really quickly explain what's going on in this picture just so you kind of understand. So. In September 11th, 2001, um, some hijackers took over some commercial airplanes and they hijacked them. And two of those airplanes were crashed into big tall buildings in New York and they were part of uh, buildings called the World Trade Center. There were a lot of buildings that made up the World Trade Center, but the biggest ones were these two giant towers. And so these planes crashed into those towers and the towers smoked for a while and then they collapsed. And so when they collapsed, all of these first responders, including firefighters, like the gentleman or woman that you see right there on that ladder, came in to try to help people. They wanted people to help get out of the buildings, and then once the buildings collapsed, they wanted to help try to find anybody that was still alive in all of the rubble that came down. So that's what all these great people did. And Steve McCreary really wanted to document that. 
Now, at the time, he was living in New York, actually pretty close to the World Trade Center. So when he first heard that the airplanes had hit the buildings, he went up on his roof and started taking pictures. Um, once he saw, oh my goodness, this is a big thing that's happening, he actually got some assistance and went down to the World Trade Center site um, and was able to kind of get into the area and from an opposite building, you can see that he took these pictures through some broken out windows of the firefighters working. Um, he was not doing this in official capacity. He wasn't doing, he wasn't like working for a magazine or a newspaper at the time. And so it was sometimes hard for him to get into the, the site. In fact, he even was asked to leave um, one of the times for his safety and for everybody's safety. But he was able to take quite a few photographs while he was there. Um, and so, like I said, this is one of them. Uh, and this is something that, again, if you were alive at that time and really remember what happened, as soon as you see that photograph, it really goes right to your brain. You know exactly what that is a photograph of. So when it came into our collection, we all knew right away what it was a photograph of. So uh, it's a really interesting piece and it really shows um, all the destruction, but it also shows some hope with that firefighter going up the ladder.